In 2020, during the pandemic, 7,197 Jamaicans were diagnosed with cancer. Of that figure, 1,208 represents the number of persons diagnosed with breast cancer. 4,576 died as a result of cancer during that same year. 66% of the 4,576 deaths is from breast cancer. A breast cancer diagnosis can be devastating, but with treatment options and support, many Jamaicans have survived, and today we meet one of them. Welcome to the MOFPS Coffee and Conversations, where we share the experiences of our public servants as they navigate a life of service. I am your host, Shaquille Rochester Shorter. Follow the ministry on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and now LinkedIn. Look for MOF Jamaica or the Ministry of Finance Jamaica. Today, we take several sips of coffee and have a conversation with Sharon Barrett, an office attendant for over nine years at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. Sharon is also a mother of one and a cancer survivor. She will tell us about her battle with breast cancer. Sharon, welcome. Welcome. How are you feeling today? I'm fine so far. Sharon, tell us about when you found out you had cancer. Okay. In October 9, 2018, one evening I went come home from work and I was going to have my bath and I feel a tough thing in the left side of my breast. Yeah. And I was wondering, why this thing here feel like this and this one don't have it? So I said, no, it's not real. Anyway, I have my bought, lay down and I was concerned. I didn't have anybody to ask about it because one child I is a boy and you know your son, you really can't just go to him about that. I said, okay. The next morning I went to work and I go to my past DFS yeah. and ask her, what is it? If she can just explain, I feel a lump and I don't know what is it and it's normally different. She took turn to me and said, sit down, don't worry yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I got a tip, let me talk to you. I'm a sit in her office and she said to me, she should feel it. And she said, wow, I don't like how it feel. You got to go to Cancer Society and do a mammogram and then they will tell you from there what is it so i started to cry and said then it's really cancer she said no don't do that to yourself yeah. just get real go there and do it and i met the appointments i went and i get the breast test. when i did it the mammogram didn't show what it is it just showed a white lump in the breast i took the result of my private doctor my private doctor said to me so she don't like it and when she examined me, she don't like how the lump feel. She said she not got to sit with it. Anyway, she got to send me to do a biopsy. I asked her, what is a biopsy? Yeah. And she started to explain what is the biopsy. So I said, well, really, that might be expensive and I might can't afford it. She said, no problem, don't worry yourself. She started to write and she told me that she sent me by KPH to one of the doctors that she and her go to school together, okay. graduate together. So she said, when you go down there, don't give anybody the letter. Just ask him in person, and it to him, and I will call him. The next morning, I get the letter like the Tuesday, and I went by the Wednesday. Yeah. That is in 2018. So when I go, I ask for him. She tell me where to go, and I go, and I ask for him, and them same run in the ward. So I have to sit and wait and tell him, come down. I sit about two to three hours before. Oh. Sitting in the lobby area, I saw this gentleman walking, coming down, and a lady get up and shout the name. Okay. And went to him. So I yes, said, oh, that, that is him, because yeah. the name. So I said, anyway, the lady talked to him. When the lady talked to him, and he walking off, I said, doctor, and I called him, and he stopped. And I said, my name is Sharon Barrett. So I said, send me to you with this letter. And him take the letter and him take out a note out of my pocket and look at it and say, oh, come with me, I get the call. And I went inside with him. He said, I must take off my clothes and go and examine me. Examine me. And he said to me, he said, he really can't tell me what the lump is. He have to run the test. 
So I said, don't worry yourself. Like, my face like me start crying. I said, no man, don't do that, don't cry. He said, it's not most cancer. It can be a lump, it can be a cyst, it can be fat, it can be anything. But the right way to know, we have to do the test. I said, oh, okay. I said, how oh, long the test going last? He said, by next week we'll do the biopsy and send it off to the lab and then you will know further on. Anyway, he gave me the data. Come in that and that day what he gave me and I go and he do the biopsy. So how, how the ministry helped you during that time? The ministry didn't come in at the time. The ministry come in at the chemo. Okay, tell us about that. When I started, I get 22 chemo treatments. Wow. And I start my chemo. Miss Mackenzie always follow me up. That's the past day of it. Yes, and she ever prayed for me, she ever taught to me, she gave me counsel, she do. She was just like a mother to me, she didn't leave me out. Yeah. And uh, as such, I tell her, I always care about my report to she, copy it, care, copy to the doctor, keep back a copy for myself. And uh, she's me tell her, I say, whatever the biopsy do, it come back, it's stage one cancer. Mm -hmm. So she said, okay, she know me I need the chemo. So she sent me for a doctor report, a medical report. I went for it, I get it, I took it back, and she do an email and send it off to Chase. She and the next lady in the ministry put together, and they emailed Chase about my health, and so the help, the help coming from them. Okay, great. So how is life now after chemo? Well, life is good now. In the chemo, it's never good. Never good because I was sick. I never really sick because after I do chemo, every Friday, I do the chemo like from 8 till 12 and I went back to work after chemo treatment. And I'm doing that 22 times. Wow. Sharon, but I, I see did that do this, the radiation. <laughs> I can say that this is very emotional for you to talk about because yeah, you have tears right now and I really, really feel would, you on, on this. Um, but what lessons have you learned from all well, this it give me a good experience but if i did follow people i wouldn't do no chemo and maybe i wouldn't hear to the day wow but i tell myself so what god have inspired for me i go after do it and without god i wouldn't be here today because the chemo wasn't easy to go through yeah it was a hard road but anyway i'm thank god for it i'm yeah. overcome it four years now and I'm awesome. still going strong. And I do I no medication, everything. I just keep doctor check up. Yes. Yes. What would you say to people that are afraid to go to the doctor? I wouldn't advise them to afraid. You know. All them have to do put them trust in the Lord okay. and stand up for them health and be there with the family help, co-workers help and such and turn themselves around. That's it. Truly inspiring, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Sharon, I'm sure your story will inspire others. Okay. Your resilience is really inspiring. Yes. Early detection is your best defense. Ensure you get tested today. Also, if you're going through a difficult period and need to speak with a professional, contact the Public Sector Employee Assistance Program at the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service by calling 876-932-5310 or send an email to pseap at mof.gov.jm. The Public Sector Employee Assistance Program is a counseling service that offers short-term assistance to public sector workers. We thank you for tuning in to this episode of MOFPS Coffee and Conversations. We aim to share the experiences of public servants as they navigate a life of service. Real people, real stories. If you haven't checked us out yet or been following us on social media, be sure to do so. We are on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and now LinkedIn. Search for MOF Jamaica or the Ministry of Finance Jamaica. Until next time, I am your host, Shaquille Rochester-Shorter.